Good morning, everybody. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, July 24th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com. Today, I'm taking you to a beach of Mexico. I think a lot of you need some relaxation this week. A lot of things going on, so let's get started. First up, we saw a potential Google search ranking update. Um, it started sometime yesterday afternoon, I believe, and it is continuing through this morning. Uh, Rank Ranger, SEMrush, and a bunch of the other tools are actually noticing this, not all of them. Not all of them have been updated at the time of recording this. So I hope to post more updates about this on that same blog post as of this morning, uh, sometime later today. Um, there's definitely a lot of chatter going on this morning, so definitely take a look. You may have been impacted by a Google search ranking update as of this morning. Um, Google, as expected, went ahead and pushed off the deadline for, Google, for mobile first indexing. So over 70% of sites that are showing up in the search results have been moved to mobile first indexing as of so far. But Google said um, back last March, in March 2020, that they will be going ahead and pushing all sites, even if they have not been moved over to mobile first indexing yet, um, to mobile first indexing process as of, they said, September of 2020. But now Google said because of uh, the pandemic, what's going on and giving people more time, they're gonna push that deadline off um, by six more months till March, 2020. So a full year from when they announced it. Um, so you have some time until March, 2021 to get the sites that haven't been moved over to mobile first indexing ready for that. Because if you are pushed over to it and your site has not automatically been moved over to it, then obviously I think Google thinks there's an issue and your rankings probably will be affected by this. Um, Google has brought back the Twitter carousel. So last week I told you how Twitter was hacked and because of the hack, Google removed the Twitter carousel from the Google search results. Google brought it back, uh, I believe on Monday or Tuesday of this week um, after doing a careful security review to make sure it was okay to bring it back. So now the Twitter carousel is back in the Google search results. Um, Google had a pretty big issue for about, I think three hours or so with Google search where it wasn't able to return many websites for navigational based queries, as well as um, um, site commands. So if you did a search for a specific type of site name, let's say search engine roundtable, search engine land, um, Google, uh, those are bad examples. I'm not sure if those specific sites had issues, but there were a number of sites that had issues around um, showing up for navigational based queries. Google fixed the issue um, and so forth. And, uh, so it was weird, three hours or so of, of navigational based queries not working. Apple updated their AppleBot um, developer documentation. Uh, but what's interesting is not just the updates to how you control AppleBot, which is Google, Apple's um, spider for crawling the web, which they don't do much of, but you might see it show up on your search logs. In any event, they updated that to show, list out their ranking factors. Um, and in the ranking factors, it talks about how it ranks content, which again is interesting because Google, sorry, Apple uses Google's web results for Siri. And this is how Google, Google, Apple's power Siri and um, Spotlight in Apple and Macs. Um, but basically they list these, these five, um, I believe five ranking factors, um, which include aggregated user engagement with search results. So are they clicking on your results? Are they going back to their pages? What are they doing with the search results? Which is interesting, Google does not use that, they said. Relevancy and matching of search terms to web page con uh, topics and content, as typical of any search engine. Number and quality of those links out of other web pages. Again, links are very important. Other search engines do that. Uh, user location-based signals. Many search engines use user location. And then web page design characteristics. Is the site itself a good site? And again, many search engines use that. Uh, but again, the aggregated user engagement metrics are people clicking on your results, how they're engaging with the results. That's something that Google has said they don't use. Bing says they do use it. Um, in any event, those are the Apple search ranking factors, which they first announced um, just this week. Um, well, they didn't officially announce it. They just posted it in the help document. Um, Bing announced a new WordPress plugin. Um, where you can actually go ahead and submit URLs um, automatically uh, by installing this plugin. So Bing has a URL submission API where you can actually go ahead and submit your URLs, new URLs, updated URLs to Bing for faster in or immediate indexing. Um, and now Bing released a WordPress plugin that um, all you have to do is install the plugin and it happened automatically. Um, so definitely if you have WordPress, it's definitely worth looking into. Well, Pascal from Google announced that WordPress 5.5 is out and with that, um, we've been talking about this for a year, um, automatic and built into the core of WordPress are site XML site Mac generations. So that's live now in WordPress 5.5 where you no longer need a plugin like Yoast or 
other plugins uh, to generate your XML sitemaps you could use. It's just built into the core of WordPress 5.5. Uh, Google Search Console released a new performance report filter for news results. So if you want to see how your traffic is doing in terms of um, traffic on the news tab, so if you go to news.google.com or you click on the news tab in Google Search, you can actually see how your site's forming in news. Obviously, this only applies to Google News Publishers. This does not include top stories. That's on web results. Um, but it is um, for um, news publishers in the news tab. So definitely take a look at that in the performance report. Google Search Console coverage report um, had this weird, weird issue where it was showing a warning, um, I think yesterday morning, uh, where it would say there's an indexing issue on July 14th, which again is weird. Google said it was a, a little glitch, a delay in how we report stuff. It was no issue on that date, um, and they fixed the issue within about an hour or so. Uh, Googlebot uh, said they will, uh, Google said they will continue to pass Googlebot's user agent no matter what Chrome does. So Chrome in January announced that they might not continue to pass user agent data uh, through the browser to the browser and to the server logs. But uh, Martin Splitt and John Mueller said that Googlebot should and will continue as far as they know passing the user agent. It needs to. Uh, Google launched a new mortgage search results box, which shows you a lot of information around mortgage information. Previously, Google just had um, a calculator. If you search for like mortgage cal calculator, interest calculator, and so forth. But now when you do a search, you get um, an overview of what a mortgage is, a calculator rates, uh, refinance videos, the process of refinancing or getting a mortgage, um, news results or leaf information, types of mortgages, uh, videos, and the history on what mortgages are. So a whole new box there, which may affect those who are in the mortgage business. Um, Google's testing a new refinement option where when you scroll down, there's no refinement options, but when you scroll up the page, Google places these refinement boxes, and I'll show a screenshot of that somewhere over there um, so you can see it. Uh, Google is showing also large image packs for queries. I haven't been able to replicate this, but I got tons and tons of people saying, why is Google showing me so many images? And you can see over here, lots of images. I'm not sure why. It might be a bug. Um, might be a test. I'm not sure. Um, Google's Danny Sullivan said that um, they are going to fix the issue where Google's showing um, local results based on the business name too often. So Google's basically weighing the business name. So if you're searching for... I don't know, let's say you do SEO and your company name is SEO or best SEO company, Google might weigh that higher than if your name is Rusty Brick um, or something like that. So uh, Google said they are looking to fix this, that they're giving too much weight to the business name in the local results, and they may go ahead and try to fix this soon. Also on the Google My Business side, Google My Business seems to be launching a new paid model, a subscription model where you, they charge you $50 a month and you get an upgrade to your business profile. Specifically, it seems like you're getting Google guaranteed icons um, or certification on your business listing, which obviously upgrades your profile. Uh, there's not much information we know about that, but it has, seems to be rolling out now. Google My Business also is sending out notifications for duplicate listings. Last week, we discussed how Google is required to send out notifications when a business listing is suspended. Uh, but now Google is also sending out notifications if a business listing is duplicative. I guess then it will remove it and suspend it, but take a look at that. Um, Google Local Panels uh, may show two phone numbers um, in some cases. And I showed an example of people seeing two phone numbers. It's been going on for the past couple of weeks. Um, pretty interesting to see that happen. Uh, Google released Ads Editor version 1.4, which includes a bunch of new features, including the bigger feature is recommendations. So now it supports recommendation features in Google in the Ads Editor. It also has local campaigns, uh, location groups, combined audiences, video sequence campaigns, um, and improved errors. And they also removed some features as well. There was an issue when it first was announced <clears throat> but that feature, that issue has been fixed, so you can definitely go ahead and install as editor for 1.4 uh, without any issues. Google Shopping um, seems to be showing um, in the carousel and the actual shopping panel in web results um, the materials used. Um, pretty interesting. You can see that over there. Uh, buy on Google, uh, which is the ability to buy stuff directly from Google Shopping, um, is now commission free, or it's coming to, going to be commission free very soon. They also added PayPal and Shopify pay, payment integration as well. It seems like Google's going head to head with Amazon on shopping right now. And while Amazon charges anywhere from like eight to fourteen percent commissions, Google's going to charge nothing. Uh, Microsoft Advertising is now offering free high quality images from Shutterstock for your campaigns. So any images that you use, you could go ahead and grab a Shutterstock image for free as long as it's used for Microsoft advertising. And finally, Google Ads says they're going to ban coronavirus COVID-19 related ads that are specifically promoting dangerous and derogatory information about the virus and the pandemic. In any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable. 
um, try to include this filter at the, at the end. So make sure to subscribe and watch those videos from the previous weeks. Everyone have a great weekend. Again, today is Friday, July 14th. Be well, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.